Peace officers and deputy sheriffs must enforce all controlled substance laws, KRS 131-218A.240, and must arrest and return any children who have escaped from a reform institution. So that's like the Fugitive Slave Act right there, right? If a kid runs from a... You have all those kids. There's like 66 dead bodies in Florida they found. Now the Queen and the Pope and the Canada has like a shit ton of fucking orphanage that has some sort of human trafficking ring that's been going on. Lots of orphanage. Uh, orphans are being... Are, are not found or there's lots of mass graves in Canada. So what the fuck is that shit about? So basically, if you're in uh, Charlie Manson came out of a reform institution in Kentucky, and he was getting raped over and over again. Every time he ran away, they would fucking fetch him and then send him back to get raped even more. Upon request from the Kentucky Board of Agriculture, a peace officer must aid in the destroying of diseased livestock, KRS 246.210. Any Kentucky peace officer may destroy a suffering, abandoned, or diseased animal. KRS 257.100. He must also impound unlicensed dogs. KRS 285.215. A peace officer may order funds derived from the sale of an animal of questionable ownership held until ownership is established. KRS 253.070. Peace officers must enforce all truck weight limit and size laws. KRS 189.223. They must seize any automobile transporting alcoholic beverages in dry territory and make all necessary arrest so they steal take your fucking automobile according to KRS 242.360 they can take your fucking car if they catch you with a 24 pack of Mike's hard lemonade if they think you're going to distribute it peace officers must serve any subpoena issued by the state parole board uh, the State Parole Board, K KRS 439.390, on being informed or having reason to believe that an unlawful professional prize fight or wrestling match is about to take place, peace officers must prevent the match, KRS 229.240. All peace officers must cooperate with the Justice Cabinet in the fingerprinting and identification of prisoners, KRS 17.115. A peace officer may arrest without a warrant any military personnel in his jurisdiction who has violated the military code of justice, KRS 35.035. Um, the Office of Constable dates from medieval England. Your constable is an elected public official. The constable is one of the only two remaining elected peace officers in the world. In Kentucky, the position of constable was established in the 1850 Constitution. The present Constitution requires... The election of one constable in each justice of the peace, also known as magistrate district. So how many magistrates you got in your county, that's how many constables you should have. Each magistrate is part of a district, and in each one of those districts, there should be a constable. Some county fiscal courts will have three fiscal members. Some will have six. It depends on the how the county itself is established. I've seen big Grant County has three on their fiscal court, whereas Gatham County has four, five or so. So... Grand County is a bigger county, but they have less magistrates, which means they would have less constable elections, too. Constables are peace officers with broad powers of arrest and authority to serve court processes. The constable has the authority to enforce both the traffic code and the criminal code of Kentucky. They may execute warrants, summon, summonses, subpoenas, attachments, notes, rules, and orders of the court in all criminal, penal, and civil cases. KRS 70.350, the Kentucky Constitution, Section 106. Constables will possess the same qualification as the sheriffs and may exercise jurisdiction in any part of the county. So they're coextensive, definitely in their own districts, but it's saying here, according to the Kentucky Constitution, the section 106, constables will possess the same qualifications as the sheriff and may exercise jurisdiction in any part of the county. So a constable can arrest people in a different district if they want to. An elected constable cannot be barred from working in the city limits by a mayor, chief of police, or by the city council, but he must keep his office in the district which he is elected. So that's OAG 74554. Constables are a fees paid officer of the court. Constables are entitled to receive fees for all citations they write and warrants they serve. The Kentucky Constitution, Section 105, states that constables shall possess the same qualifications as sheriffs, and their jurisdiction shall be coextensive with the counties in which they reside. Statement of Common Purpose. The purpose of the Kentucky Constable is to uphold the law fairly and firmly to prevent crime, 
to pursue and bring to justice those who break the law, to keep the peace, to protect, help, and reassure the community, and to be seen to do all this with integrity, common sense, and sound judgment. We must be compassionate, courteous, and patient, acting without fear, favor, or prejudice to the rights of others. We need to be professional, calm, and restrained in the face of violence, and apply only that force which is necessary to accomplish our lawful duty. We must strive to reduce the fears of the public and, so far as we can, to reflect their priorities in the action we take. Qualifications. Constables must be 24 years of age, a citizen of the state for two years, and a resident of the county and district one year prior to the election. Before taking office, constables must execute a bond at a minimum amount of $10,000 approved by the fiscal court. Deputies in the counties containing first class and second class cities, constables with the approval of the county judge executive may appoint one or more deputies. KRS 70.320. Each deputy constable in counties containing a consolidated local government or city of first class shall be compensated by a salary set by the consolidated local government or fiscal court and paid out of the levy of the consolidated local government or county. Each deputy constable must be an American citizen at least 21 years of age and must have resided in the county for two years. He may not have been a watchman, night guard, or a detective for two years preceding his employment. So he could have been a watchman, a night guard, or a detective for two years before he's employed. I'm not sure this is all the detective, all each deputy constable. So each deputy has to be at least 21 years old, be a citizen, not have been a watchman, night guard, or a detective for two years preceding his employment. A person convicted of or under indictment for a crime involving moral terror turpitude is also ineligible for the position of deputy KRS 61.300. Constables are liable for all acts and omissions of their deputies and may remove them by filing a written directive uh, written direction with the county judge executive or by the mayor in a consolidated local government KRS 70.3 Peace officers in the state of Kentucky, general, the sheriff, and three other elected county officials, coroners, jailers, and constables are peace officers possessing law enforcement powers, KRS 446.010. These powers include a broad grant of authority to make arrest under the authority of KRS 431.005. Any peace officer may make an arrest in obedience to a warrant without a warrant when a felony is committed in his presence, without a warrant when he has probable cause to believe he's committed a felony, without a warrant when a misdemeanor as defined in KRS 431.060 has been committed in his presence or without a warrant when harassment, criminal trespass in the third degree, and certain traffic violations are committed in his presence or if he has probable cause to believe that a person is driving under the influence of alcohol or any substance which may impair his driving ability. Kentucky defines between felonies, misdemeanors, and violations is the punishment, the length of time that you can be punishment. So offenses that are punishable by death or confinement that can be jailed in the penitentiary, whether or not a fine or other penalty may be assessed, are felonies. So if you can be put in jail for it, then that's a felony. If it, you can be put to death for it, that's a felony. Offenses that are punishable by um, confinement other than in the penitentiary, so there's fucking prison, and then there's holding cells, right? The penitentiary. Whether or not a fine or other penalty may may be assessed are misdemeanors. So if you could be confined in a holding cell but not a penitentiary, they're misdemeanors. Uh, offenses that are punishable by a fine only and by any other penalty not cited herein, whether in combination with a fine or not, are violations. So if you could be thrown in jail, that's a misdemeanor or a felony. If not, then it's just a violation, right? So if you could be thrown into a holding cell like a local county jail, that would make it a misdemeanor if you're um, able to be held into the penitentiary, the fucking federal prisons, um, um, then that's a felony. So that's 431.060. And um, that's really how you, people you're going to learn what the laws are just by getting on KRS and sort of seeing what what is you know allowed and what isn't allowed. The 503 KRS 503 talks about justified. So when it comes about being justified, the general principles of justification comes out of Chapter 503. And so you go to 503 and it says there's definitions for the chapter, there's uh, justification of defense, choice of evils, ex execution of public duty, using physical force and self-protection, admissibility of evidence of prior acts of domestic violence and abuse. So justification is a defense. This is, um, again, 503.020. So... 
for defense in any prosecution for an offense. Justification, as defined in this chapter, is a defense. So in justified, they said, well, you just told him to get, leave town in 24 hours or you would just shoot him in public. And he was like, well, he pulled on me, right? He pulled his gun. So if you pulled your gun, then he feels threatened, you can kill him. That's You're allowed to murder somebody if you feel like they're going to pull a gun out on you. And Kentucky's also, there's a carry concealed weapon card, which only applies to about 1.5% of the population, like 300,000 or so that are issued. Um, but everybody's allowed to have um, uh, weapons that are not concealed. So unconcealed weapons. We have an unlimited amount of unconcealed weapons we're allowed to have. You know, you could have like a fucking outfit of guns, and that's acceptable uh, as long as they're on the outside and not on the inside of your clothes. So, justification, it, that is a defense. If you're justified in hurting somebody, um, then that's it's acceptable to hurt them if you have justification. And the uh, justification for hurting somebody would be to try to subdue them for an arrest. Um, it would be to, um, you know, um, like what I just said about getting someone pulling a gun out on you. So, the choice of evils, 503.030, unless inconsistent with the ensuing sections of this code defining justifiable use of physical force and with some of the other provisions of law, conduct which would otherwise constitute an offense is justifiable when the defendant believes it to be necessary to avoid an imminent public or private injury greater than the injury which is sought to be prevented by the statute defining the offense charged except that no justification can exist under this section for an intentional homicide. When the defendant believes that conduct which would otherwise constitute an offense is necessary for the purpose described in subsection 1,